Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In my previous video, I have shown how you can create a dev tunnel using the Visual Studio code, or you can also call it port forwarding, meaning you are accessing your code from local host over the public domain. Now, what if your code is running into the Visual Studio? So for example, you have a C Sharp REST API and your Visual Studio to run your code in a local host environment and wanted to access over the public internet. How you can do that without using any third party tool, I will show you. So let's dive into Visual Studio and see it. So you can see this is the REST API We're using as a webhook. I'm configuring this REST API as a webhook in my Azure DevOps. The purpose of creating this webhook is to anytime when a new PR has been created, this webhook has been called reading the code that was associated to that PR, sending it to the open AI. And once open AI suggests any kind of a code reviews suggestion, that is posting a comment in the Azure DevOps against that PR because Azure DevOps does not understand the local host when you are configuring a webhook. So I need to create a public URL while my code is running on my local so that I can able to test the functionality real time instead of deploying every time into the server. That's the necessity and the use case I have. I can do it in two ways. First, I can use a third party tool called ngrok. That's also being used for tunneling purpose. Yeah. Or you can leverage the Visual Studio native capability. Due to some policies, I'm not able to install any third party tool. So I found this native way, which is very easy and you don't have to install any kind of a tool, which does not allow from your organization. So if you see in order to create this dev tunnel, you just have to click on this small arrow in Visual Studio, go to the dev tunnel, create tunnel, give the name, you can choose temporary or persistent. I'm choosing persistent because that way my domain URL, which is going to be created when I generate this dev tunnel, it will remain persistent. So I don't have to like every time I run this code, a new URL is going to be generated. So the URL, those are going to be associated with this dev tunnel will remain consistent and forever. Now you have to set the access level. You can keep it private. Then it is all pretty much same as local load host it's just have a domain name you can keep it organizational level so it will only access within your organization or you can keep it public i prefer public because this is the whole purpose of having a public url so that i can access this from anywhere while my code is running once you set all these parameters just click on ok after some time you will see a message yep you can see the message would say your dev tunnel has been successfully created and is selected as the currently active tunnel. So when you run this code, instead of running your code in a local host port, it have a specific domain. We just have to click continue and forget about this error because I delete this controller due to which every time when I run, it throws an exception. But if I go and type swagger, I can access my web API. Now, as you see, uh, this is associated with the domain, meaning I can access it from any pair, from any machine. Currently my code is running on my VM, not on my personal laptop. It's a different machine. So if I access this URL from my local laptop, I can, I'll show you quickly. So I open up the browser on my local laptop when I hit this domain, I can access this from my local laptop, whereas the code is running on my VM. Now, if I stop the debugging on my VM and go to my laptop browser and refresh the page, you can see this is not accessible anymore because I stopped the debugging in my VM. When I run the code again in a debug mode, and refresh the URL, you can see it is working 
as soon as they start debugging. That's the advantage of keeping it persistent. So you don't have to change this domain every time when you stop the code and rerun it. If you keep it temporary, that means it will only associate it to the particular session. And when you stop and start again, a new domain get generated. I hope this video is really helpful. How you are going to use this feature? Tell me in the comment section. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Okay.